Welcome back, fans and friends, for this upcoming video. I have a 1970 Dodge Charger RT, but this is the Fast and the Furious 6 version of the car. So we see up there, 3 out of 8, Fast and Furious, Fast and Furious 6. And down there, 1970 Dodge Charger RT, as you can clearly see the RT slapped on the side there. The otherwise distinctive lines of that 1970 and not 1969 because as you know they went from the uh, split to the not split so it's and these are both RTs uh, I've covered this one in the green light video of the same name you see there 1970 Dodge Charger RT 2992 uh, which I think is one of the best renditions of it and then you have here this one unfortunately it's not 1970, I think it's 1968, and for some unknown reason, this is the only uh, Ultra Hots that I have that does not list the car. So all the other ones, 1968 Mercury Cougar, the Plymouth Barracuda, Formula S, all that is labeled. So we are literally going by Dodge, Charger, and then it has the little RT in the back there. See there, the little red letters? So we just assume it's a 1969 or 1968 Dodge Charger RT. Well, we know what it is because you have the video and I once had the package, but it otherwise does not list on the car what it is. So we will be taking a look at this one and you can see right there, Dodge Charger. Oh, it might actually not do it either. So anyway, we're going to take it out of the package. Does The underside does look way better though than what you normally get for a Hot Wheel, so that's good news. Just moving on to the back of the package, we have, I have so many of these, I haven't really seen it recently, uh, I have not seen, I probably would pick this up, having bought a bunch of Grand Nationals recently, you know the uh, Maystow versions, obviously I'm not going to buy this one again. You can never go wrong with the Torino Sport. For GT I have a few, and I have a few good ones. Uh, Toyota Supra, this is what they're famous for. That and obviously the Dodge Charger and the Daytona they race against in the first movie. Super, Super WRX STI, I have a bunch of them. So if I see it, I'll get it. If I don't see it, I won't get it. Uh, unfortunately, this is a... Uh, once again, it was on the shelf, but you can clearly see there that it had sat and or fallen underneath for quite a while. Because that is 2014. So I would not imagine what the prices on some of these things are used. So not used, but on the aftermarket. So Universal, obviously Universal Pictures is the maker of the Fast and Furious franchise. We have Nissan for a bunch of cars there. And we have Ford, Dodge, which is a price of, part of Chrysler, but there's nothing actually Chrysler up there. And then we have Subaru as the last representative right there. So, and obviously this car has its aftermarket modded uh, it is I would call it a premium slash semi premium version of the car you do get this little plastic insert that does nothing more than keep the uh, vehicle from getting scratched on both sides otherwise it's just the cardboard of the back of the card so from the top we can clearly see into the cabin the interior is a reflective silver, usually this kind of silver, slash aluminized, uh, anodized aluminum. Uh, very easy to see into. We have painted door handles. We have the RT right on the side there in the extensions. You can see it clearly see it there on both sides here. Tie-downs for the engine. The aftermarket scoop. I will not begin to re tell you, fans and friends, what the engine is. But you can assume it's only either a Hemi or a 440 or something that's been had this done to it. It does look really nice. It would look even better. Uh, let's suppose if Greenlight had done it with like with that, like they've done with a bunch of their Mustangs, or M2 has done with a bunch of their uh, other cars, because this is the perfect car for that era. You can clearly see the lines are not quite as defined. Obviously, you're not, but but there are uh, eerily close, so it's not terrible. Uh, like I said, one of the best features about that is the translucent Hemi written on the engine deck. There's the intakes that are similar to that one, but not the same. Obviously, they've changed this part. Just starting from the front, it's plain. Otherwise, 
I don't see any sort of other reflective material. It does look really nice, though. Don't get me wrong. Uh, we move to the other side. Exactly the same as this side. Because as you know, the gas cap is right here. It doesn't have to be on the other side. Everything else is exactly the same. It's probably closer to a non-premium. The one thing that separates it is these wheels. Uh, it does look nice, though. Because what they've done is they've uh, added it in such a way, the reflectors, that it looks like it's part of the suspension. But it's just because the interior is so highly reflective. And then finally, we're down to the bottom of the car. Uh, like I said, uh, it's probably something they do with Dodge and Chrysler Group. They don't put the car make on it. So like I said, the Mercury has it. That's a Ford product. The Plymouth had it, and that's a Chrysler product, so I don't understand just the Dodge Chargers. You just look at this, and you can say, oh, okay, I know what a car is. I know what a Dodge Charger is, and here we are. But, however, it is really well done. Uh, it probably rifles the green light in that respect alone. So you can clearly see there they've done some actual work in the Hot Wheels one rather than it's usually very close to this where you literally have that's the transfer case that's the drive shaft sorry and the transmission transfer case and then pretty much that's it so this one you can see they did a little bit more obviously it's not ter terribly good but it's much better than what you normally get uh, there's the h32 and this is obviously 2010 release would have been four years old by the time this came out and all they've done is differentiate the back sorry the bottom from the top and we do have there Universal Studios trademark. So that I didn't see that probably because it was sitting in the package like this. It's probably impossible to see. I guess that's the main way you'd know that it's a movie product, movie related product, like a, what you would get from the screen time. Uh, so this is Fast and the Furious specific. It is not their screen time series, but otherwise it's probably just. It doesn't have the 250 at the top. It just has this. So rather than being a part of the main line, it is a separate, slightly separate set. And so you, there are eight cars only. I was going to say it doesn't look like it's 10, but there's only eight there in that series. So I can't complain too much. I don't like it better than that one. It is better than this one, though. Uh, and not because I do like the 1968s, 69s, and 67s. It's better than 1970. They still look great, but they're just... And then this one, I mean, I don't, I don't remember how much I paid for it, but I don't think it was anywhere near as expensive as what that was. So it's okay. And the matte black is really nice. In fact, if they ever re-release Black Bandit with the matte black, so not the shiny black, but the matte black for this, I'll, I'll definitely pick one up. So, to the roll test quickly in this video. Thank you, fans and friends, for watching. 1969 Dodge Charger RT from the Fast and Furious 6 series. Hot Wheels. This is Thomas from Toronto, and thanks for watching.